Get out of one Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Second video, second day. Let's try now to keep things moving along a little bit. Just regular little updates. Excuse me, what have I been working on? Lots of things this year. Um, I don't know, I have to compile from looking through my Facebook feed all the different things I've been doing this year, but most recently I've been working on my Boromite figures for Gates of Antares. Now I've had some stuff for Gates of Antares for quite a long time. Um, quite a long time, probably over a year actually. Maybe close to a year. Actually, no. Not quite a year. I think I got stuff when I was in the UK last October. Um, I popped in to see um, Dando from, um, Richard Dando from Warlord Games and uh, he'd show me uh, around their facilities and we went up and uh, had a quick look at their painting studios and the, their sculptures and all that sort of stuff and uh, all their production facilities and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he gave me a whole bunch of uh, Gates of Antara stuff to have a look at because I'd expressed an interest in it. So he was like, here, have some stuff. Um, do something with it. And it sat around, sat around, sat around, sat around. And then I saw him again um, when I was there for Salute, went up to Nottingham, 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 not to go spend some time with Ronnie from Antic, catch up with the guys from um, Warlord Games, meet a few other people, um, Stephen May from uh, Spectre Miniatures and a few other people from various podcasts and whatnot. Um, and like I said, popped into Warlord. So spoke to uh, um, Richard Dando there and um, Andrew Chesney, spent some time with those guys at the, the old trip to Jerusalem. That's a great, great little pub. It was nice. Lots of beautiful food there. Beautiful, beautiful food. Sliders. Oh, these little burgers. Amazing. And he gave me more um, Gates of Antara stuff. Actually, he gave me that stuff when we talked at Salute. Um, and so I've got a lot, right? I've got to start doing something with it. So I've read through the rules again. Not been a massive sci-fi person. I said, look, I've got to give this a shot and see what it's like. And now, I think it's one of those sorts of games where I'm going to have to play a little bit with a few people to get the gist of it. It's not a, it's not a simple, tiny little rule book. It's a nice, big, hardcover rule book. Mind you, a lot of this includes all of the factions, history, fluff, story, um, and then obviously a little bit for rules and all that sort of stuff. But it's not an overly complex game. It's fairly, fairly basic, actually. Um, it's just a matter of playing it and becoming familiar with uh, your army. Now... I've chosen to do the Boromites and I've shown lots of uh, pictures on YouTube of the Boromites that I'm painting. I didn't want to do the studio th theme, uh, th is it a theme, studio theme? Paint scheme. But you see, I'm, I've never been a big fan of studio schemes copying them. I'd rather do something that's my own and be a little bit more creative what I'm, uh, with what I'm doing. So I went with a different route. Um, round. Uh, I thought I'd do yellow. I had an Imperial Fist Army from 40k a long, long time ago. I haven't played 40k for five or six years, four or five years maybe. But I wanted to do yellow, so I started off with yellow. It wasn't a fantastic uh, result, so I dulled it down a little bit and ended up with this sort of this orangey, browny, yellow sort of uh, rock hide uh, that is very reminiscent of the thing. Now, I thought I'd offset that yellow with blue because it's on the other side of the color wheel, so there'd be a nice uh, complement there. And I think it's turned out quite nicely. I really enjoy painting these guys uh, it's been a bit different than the other stuff that I've been doing this year, which is a lot of historical stuff. Um, some, uh, um, they had a big war in America, war of independence, civil war. Civil war, there we go. It's not a difficult word to remember. American civil war. Um, I've been painting a lot of those guys, and they've just been base coats and dips, and a quick shade, um, which I brush on. Uh, and they've sort of, it's nice to get some of those sorts of armies done. I'm giving up on that project. I'm going to sell those American Civil War figures because I'm never going to play it. I, I just had this delusion of grandeur that I'd have these, paint up all my armies and put them on display and then put them on the shelves and they'd look amazing whether I played with them or not. My stuff would be painted and I'd walk into my gaming room and I'd fucking shelves and shelves of painted miniatures, it'd be great. But that's never going to happen because I'm not excited about it. I'm not passionate about it. I painted up maybe 30, 40 of them earlier in the year and uh, uh, it just, there was no excitement about it. It was just like a oh, fucking little bit of blue, little bit of grey, I pick out some flesh, little bit of weapon, I dip. Um, it wasn't exciting, so I'm going to give it away. And I think I'll have a big cull of all of my stuff and just really get rid of the stuff that I'm not really interested in anymore. There's no point hanging on to it and going, oh, I'll paint that and put it in the cabinet if I'm not going to be excited while I'm painting it. Because if I'm not excited while I'm painting it and I paint it, 
force myself to paint it, it's going to kill the enthusiasm for painting stuff that I do actually want to paint. Um, like my Twilight figures, I really want to get those painted. In fact, I had them out at the same time as the American Civil War. But my brain was like, oh, just, quick, just base coat the American Civil War and dip them, it'll be quick, it'll be simple. And it was quick, and it was simple. But uh, the couple of weeks that I spent doing that, given that I only get a few hours every uh, night or, or a couple of times a week to paint, killed the enthusiasm to paint those Twilight figures. So they're sitting around still undercoated. Um, and I'd very much rather have my Twilight figures painted because it's a fantastic game, then my American Civil War figures, which I'm never going to use. Anyway, come back to the Boromites. So here we are, painting up these Boromites. It's been great fun. Instead of doing those base coats and quick shades, it's been a whole bunch of layering and a little bit of blending, and so my, my hand and feel and for blending and stuff is, is coming back. I used to do commission work. I can paint really, really well. Um, but it's been four or five years since I did that. And uh, this process of just base coats, quick shades, oh fuck it, it's just a gaming piece, who gives a shit, has resulted in me not being able to paint like I used to be able to paint. But that's slowly coming back with each figure that I do well, I was going to say properly, but uh, however you paint is proper, right? There's no wrong way, there's no fucking cheating, quick shades and dips aren't cheating. Maybe we'll have a discussion about that. And this will form part of this video in a little bit towards the end. Just, I'm trying to catch up, but it's, you know, fucking meandering all over the place. So the Boromite figures from uh, Warlord Games, Four Gates of Antares, have been great fun for me to paint. It's really reinvigorated me for painting, because it's been a long time since I've sat down and got out tiny brushes and did a lot nice fine edge highlights and blended those in, and um, it's been really good fun. So lots and lots of updates uh, I've been putting on my Facebook page about those. The Gates of Antares uh, Facebook group, uh, there's a link in the description, is going nuts right now. There's just content. New people are posting, posting, posting. It wasn't like that even just a month ago. It was just a little bit. Uh, or maybe maybe I didn't know it was like that because I, I sort of I wasn't interacting with it so much so it wasn't popping up in my feed as often as it is now. Uh, but there just seems to be constant updates of people painting their stuff. Mind you, the game's only been out for sort of since uh, uh, October, November last year, I think. Um, so it's still, still very much in its infancy, still finding its ground. People are still painting 500 point skirmish forces. Is it a skirmish force? A scouting force, I think, 500 points. is. That's the lowest level, and it goes up to sort of probably around 1,000, 1,250 will be your midpoint uh, or your standard. Um, and then sort of, if you want to get bigger than that, uh, sort of, I'm sure there'll be people out there doing that. But uh, so lots of people painting their 500 point forces, which I'm doing for my Boromites. Um, and Warlord Games, again, in their infinite generosity, are sending me some more Boromite so I can top that up to a thousand points. Um, really, uh, they're, they're an amazing uh, group of people. Very, very friendly people. Um, I guess that depends on who you talk to, I suppose, because everyone has their own impressions and experiences and issues. But uh, in this respect, they've, they've been quite accommodating and um, it's, been, uh, it's been good fun painting these figures. I've got to say, uh, you, you're not going to show it. I've, you won't be able to see it. I'm tired of doing this sort of shit. Let's just put some pictures up, right? It's, that's much, much easier to do. You get a clear picture. I've got to say that these figures, I have not seen one mold line. I have not need to clean one mold line. The figures, excuse me, while I spit everywhere and continue looking for my non-existent glass of water, um, were flawless. Actually, that's not 100% true. One of these guys had a little bit of flash in between his neck and his weapon, which I had to clean up. But otherwise, they're the cleanest figures I've ever seen. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that's simply because they're new molds. It's a new, well, new sort of, having to run off sort of tens of thousands of copies. Um, so the molds are still in very good condition. That, the master mold maker who's made these molds knows his stuff. And, that, and obviously the casters who are actually casting the figures know how their equipment run and how to uh, adjust the pressure and speed and all that sort of stuff to get good casts out because these have been flawless 98% um, of the time. They've been great fun to paint. So I'm not going to go back and try and recap everything that's happened since the beginning of the year because I have enough hard enough trouble trying to remember what happened last week. Um, let's just wrap up what's been happening this year to that point, the Boromites, because that's kind of what I remember doing. Um, and what am I doing now? So. Um, I've got a couple of highlights to finish on my command squad for the Boromites. 
That then gives me uh, two, uh, two units in a command squad, and then I need to paint up a, a, brood, a brood mother, um, and that'll give me my 500 points. So, but before I do the brood mother, I'll finish those highlights after this video and put those aside with the others. Um, but before I do the brood mother, I need a bit of a change of pace from blue and yellow. And you, yesterday I spoke about Tribal, um, the small skirmish game from Mana Press, which I'm very excited about, partly because it's local, partly because it's available now, um, and uh, it's a very quick and easy rule set to uh, learn and play. Um, so I'm doing my Maoris. Right now they're outside, they got a base coat of uh, human flesh. This one, ba -ba, human flesh from um, Army Painter. Now, I will do a little bit of filming about how I paint them. I don't have a fantastic setup for painting, and I'm a fucking super uncoordinated painter. Like fucking arms and shit all over the place, and resting on the desk and stuff, and um, it, it's not going to film very nicely. I can't sit there and paint in the air like this, or in, on just in front of a desk in the same spot like all these other painters. I'm fucking uncoordinated when I paint. Which is probably why it takes me ages to paint stuff because I'm fucking all over the place and twisting these these knobs all upside down and oh shit I need to get a rest on there and um, my body is not fantastic. Way too many motorcycle accidents and bad joints and shit. Um, so I've lost track now about my Maoris. Anyway, so they got that human flesh base coat. I've given them this because that's going to ultimately going to be my highlight colour. I'm really going to thin down the paints um, to give me the darker flesh tone that I want. And the paints are going to be quite transparent. So as I lay them up, it'll get darker and darker and darker in the recesses. And then you'll still get that colour coming through on the top, which will give me my highlights. Uh, they'll be very, very simple to do. I'm not going to dip them because I do want to do a little bit more brushwork on these guys and sort of retrain my hand, retrain my eye, retrain my colour theory, which has never really been a, sort of something for me. I've, I don't know why I said that. I would like to learn a little bit about colour theory. Um, I've always just picked colours and painted. So that's what I'm doing now, the Maori. What would I like to keep doing to make sure that I'm motivated, excited and uh, continuing to produce content? Because I do enjoy it and I miss it. It's been a big part of my hobby since 2009, since I started filming videos in my garage three houses back, two houses back? Yeah, two houses ago, long time ago. Since 2009, I think, was the first video I uploaded about magnetizing my fantasy armies. Or my undead, maybe? I can't remember. If you want to go back to my very first two videos, you can tell me in the comments. Um, so I want to keep on doing it because it's, a, it's, a, it's been an extension of my hobby and sharing, sharing what I'm doing with people has always been a big interest of mine. I used to do, and you guys uh, t still tell me, we want more tutorials for scenery building and all that sort of, I don't get a lot of time for that sort of stuff anymore. The studio's not really set up for that sort of stuff anymore because there's so much equipment and machinery and 3D printers and laser cutters and, and packing areas, shrink wrapping and all that sort of stuff. It's not my super extended man cave anymore. It's very difficult to do that sort of stuff because the studio's not set up like that anymore and uh, I just don't have the time to do it. I will try every now and then when I get super excited, like I did last night at 11 o'clock at night, chatting with Scott on Facebook, I thought, fuck, I'm gonna to go to the studio and make a, a three by three table for demoing uh, Tribal. That didn't happen because it was 11 o'clock at night. By the time we finished sort of amping each other up, it was half past 12 and they're like, fuck it up. It's gonna do a bit more research on some various tribes and then go to bed. Um, so I would like to do some of that, but it's not gonna be a regular feature on my channel anymore. Um, uh, you, you, everyone who watches me will already know Mel's channel, um, the Terrain Tutor. He's, that's what he does. He does a much, much better job than I do. Uh, and uh, uh, he's certainly someone that you should watch if you're after hints and tips on building terrain. Uh, I will try to do things from time to time, but this channel and sort of, uh, I think it's just going to be a bit more of me rambling on, a bit more of my blog. Uh, I've got, I'm waiting on some parts of my brewery. I haven't brewed for a long time. I, I've, left some water and shit in there and my elements and stuff rusted and that's another issue we'll talk about that later on but this will be just me right rambling and talking about what i'm doing and sh and sharing my hobby experiences with you guys and if i can help teach you something along the way well that would be fantastic and i will certainly try but it's not going to be a big focus of my channel anymore um so if you watch me for a long time 
and uh, you really enjoyed my train tutorials, and you're disappointed that there's not going to be uh, a focus on that anymore, I'm terribly, very sorry, and if you leave, thank you so much for, for, for hanging around for such a long time, but uh, there's lots of good stuff, I think, still in me to come out. So there we go, that's what's going on. The Maori are outside. Um, I'm going to wrap this up here because it's been a big long ramble and I need a glass of water. Hey. Oh, it's fucking empty. Uh, I'm out of here. Thanks guys for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Hey, yo, yeah, one more thing. Fuck, that's the whole point of this video. How long has it been? It doesn't tell me anymore. It stopped telling me how long the video's been because I never get to what I'm supposed to be talking about until the fucking end of the video. Um, questions, comments. That's right, yes. Oh, I was mentioning on my Facebook page that I might start, um, just because I'm going to be doing this blog and hobby sort of stuff a bit more often, starting to recap some of the stuff that happened in the previous video according to the comments and people's comments, questions and comments. So I might do uh, that at the beginning of each of my videos. I'll come up with some sort of format for how I'm going to present that. It'll be a, a, a quick couple of minutes of me just recapping. Hey, this is what happened in the last video. XYZ had mentioned this and um, blah, blah, blah. This is what I think about it. And this person asked me this question, blah, blah, blah. And this is what I think about it. Um, and then get on with the video and ramble like I am now. And after 15 minutes, we get to the point of why the video is happening. Probably. Uh, so I might start doing some of that sort of stuff. Because I don't get time to respond uh, now to comments as much as I used to. I, I used to do that quite a lot. Um, and it's just slowly, slowly dwindled off. Partly because I got more and more, more and more comments. And then as my content creation started to shrink, I just got more and more busy with other things that I just don't have time to go back and constantly be checking my comments and messages uh, like I used to. I'm a very vain person and I've always fed off of that community feedback um, on my videos and that's really encouraged me to, to, to create more. Um, and so one way of, of, of keeping amped and motivated was to read all those comments and get excited and create new videos. Look at this, it's a fucking sign. It's telling me we're running out of battery power. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'll be back very, very soon. No doubt, probably tomorrow. Once I get some progress done on this Maori, I might even film some of that content tonight. I don't know. I need a better format for collating videos together that spread out over a week. My file management is terrible. Fuck off, get out of here, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you next time, guys. Have a good afternoon, evening, or morning, weekend, weekday, whatever. I'll see you next time. See ya.